Welcome back to Creative Thinkers. My name is Miguel Valenzuela once again. And of course, we're coming from our homes because we are still in this pandemic, uh, COVID-19. Uh, so it's keeping us here, but we're still kind of doing this whole thing uh, via the internet. So we have a wonderful, wonderful guest today. She is a friend of mine, uh, Miss Rebecca Quintana. She is a local sculptor, but she doesn't just sculpt. She does a lot of other things. And that's what we're going to talk to her about because she is a very creative person. So Rebecca, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. That's awesome. I'm glad that you were able to talk to us because you're a very interesting individual. So I want to start off. I know that you're from El Paso. But give us a little insight on how you grew up, what kinds of influences you had, maybe what school you went to. Tell us. I started out um, in El Paso on the east side. So I went to Hanks. And uh, then soon after Hanks, I left. Uh, my dad it was in San Diego. So he was doing historical restoration and he had some large projects going and he needed my help. So I went ahead and Shout out to San Diego and helped him with Balboa Park. Balboa Park is a very interesting place to visit. It's beautiful. What kind of work there? We did historical restoration, probably about 90% of the historical restoration in San Diego. So the gas lamp quarter is um, created. There were, it was falling apart, so they basically pulled all the different interesting building facades and made Horton Plaza. So that's one job that we did, Horton Plaza, Balboa Park, House of Charm, House of Hospitality, um, pretty much Bank of America, the city of Escondido, the city hall, we have statues at the airport. So we've done a few things. We've been in San Diego and El Paso for a long time. So give us a little bit of background on how you guys began to do that. For example, your dad obviously is a sculptor. From a young age, was he beginning to sculpt or did he learn that trade? And then in turn, maybe you learned that from him. Yes, exactly. He, he was um, one of many children and they were musically inclined. And my grandfather was uh, Vicente Quintana and he uh, painted with Diego Rivera at the World's Fair in Chicago. So wow. we have a long history of doing artwork and working uh, with artists on a large scale. And the sculptures that he made, because I remember going to his studio at one point many moons ago, but it was beautiful, beautiful sculptural elements. I know that he does a lot of relief. Is that something that you focus on as well? And by relief, I mean when we sculpt three-dimensional elements from flat surfaces. So talk to us a little bit about that because it's very interesting. Yes, yes, absolutely. In fact, the most recent job that we did at Hotel Paso del Norte, there was a relief. It's the only known signature of Mr. Trost, who was the architect who did Art Deco, uh, and he did the Bassett Tower. He did uh, Paso del Norte, which was also the Camino Real. And he, uh, he actually had this huge, large relief done. Uh, and it's lovely. It's an Indian and a priest. And it's just beautiful. And it, it has that sculptural element where it's coming away. So you will find that now in Paso del Norte in their elevators on the floor is the relief. We got the relief partially, um, partially completed. And so it was my job uh, to re-sculpt it, retool it, get it ready for mold. And then we had it casted in metal that could handle, you know, high heels and things like that in an elevator. So. Oh, wow. So when you guys uh, redo surfaces or refinish objects, you don't always recreate it as it was. Sometimes you might... Uh, cast it in a different way and then redo it that way as well? Well, if it's for historical restoration to be considered, uh, if you want to comply with the uh, and, and receive the tax benefits, then you have to basically remake anything so that if someone came in, an expert, and they saw it, they would not know the difference. So if, when you do go to Paso del Norte, you'll notice that the, um, 
two of the chandeliers in there we we made. So there's two uh, that are originals, and then we had two. Uh, they were really they were they were basically just falling apart. So that's a, wow. that's too much of a hazard. As uh, as is with many many things that we've done, we usually will take them. We're master mold makers, so we can do five-sided molds sometimes it gets crazy with the amount of sides to make a mold so we that's what our speciality is so sometimes you'll find me hanging on the outside of a building trying to get a mold <laughs> off <the side. laughs> so, so I walk us through that whole mold <laughs> well uh i started when i was really young you were talking about uh, having a sculptural background yeah, so me having a sculptural background, I understand that concept, but for our viewing audience, what exactly does that mean? What does it entail? Well, it depends on the material and where it is, of course, and how detailed it is, of course. So if it's super easy, then you can pop a mold out of some basic plaster or cement product, byproduct. It's it's not as hard. But when you get something that's extremely um, detailed, has a lot of undercuts, has a lot of like a flowy robe, then you have to make a very, very intense mold. It's going to take a lot more to take it apart uh, so that you don't break off things like arms or uh, important pieces, ears, noses, things like that. So we, um, we actually make molds on, we'll do a takeoff on, let's say a building's falling apart. Uh, there's quite a few still in El Paso that need uh, restoration. So we would go in there and we would say, okay, this area of the building, which is what we did inside Paso del Norte as well, uh, this area of the building uh, is really a great example of what was there originally. And then we'll take a mold of it. We'll actually put material on it to make a copy of it. And then we'll take the mold off and we'll cast it in our shop. And then we will create a, another mold out of it. So you're going to be making quite a few molds. And it depends. For Paso del Norte, we had quite a few molds because the pieces were huge. There were caps of, of columns that were uh, five feet by maybe sometimes seven. Wow, so those are huge. It because it's not a- Wow, that is cast. massive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're trying to remake it, you don't want it really, really big because then you're sitting there with some big mold. So you have to know how to make it small and then put it back together. And then of course- When you um, run into- Right, right. So when you run into situations like that where you're actually casting something, the process would be you looking at the object, the object is made out of plaster or something like that. You then you take some other material, you press it onto the piece so you can get the negative, I assume, mm -hmm. right? Apply it or apply it sometimes. It's or apply it, it. Uh -huh. then you pull that off and then you pour another type of material in that to make a new version of it. Correct, and clean it up. This is where the sculpting comes in. Uh, make sure it's a really pretty copy of it. And then you make another mold, a master mold, and then you will make your casts. Sometimes you'll have, dependent on how many you're going to make, you might have 10 molds or it depends. Sometimes the contractor, like we came in on the end of the job at Paso del Norte. So we were, they were cracking whips on us. So we were really working <laughs> fast and we were working. I was working 24 hours a day. People would come by and see me working at, you know, three o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning. I'd see people walking by and they'd all wave or stand in the window and stare at me painting. So it was interesting. When you were young, going back, you know, a few years, when you were young, did you expect to be doing this? Was it something that you always thought, I am a creative individual as a child. I think when I grow up, I'm going to do something that's creative. I see my dad doing it. Why can't I do it? Or did you think you were going to be something else? No, I did want to be an architect. So I did want to work in uh, with buildings. And I didn't end up going the architectural route. But mm -hmm. I did end up, uh, I didn't, you tend to not have, I don't think you tend to see your abilities until somebody shows you in your face. And my dad did that when I was about 12 and he, because I wasn't feeling like I was very good maybe uh, at it and at sculpting and I was frustrated. I think I broke a few pencils 
And uh, that would be my frustration. <laughs> I don't want to do it. So um, he actually made me sculpt a piece of a building. And it's, it's a, there's this face. It's like a gargoyle face. And right. I just was upset and fit and, oh, fussing. And he said, come on back to the back. I want to show you what these art students have done. And he had them do the same thing. And there was about, I think there was four or five of them on the table. And they were terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so, from, so from that point forward, you understood that that was kind of your calling. You didn't yeah. do that though immediately, right? What else did you do when you were young, creatively speaking? Well, I did that uh, creatively. I was, I loved sculpture and I love painting. That's my favorite. That's is painting and sculpture. Um, but I just had a knack for it. And then um, I worked in art for, I think until I was in college. And then I started, I was working as a paralegal as well. So I worked in, um, I worked for Oakley's attorneys. So I was lucky. I had a really nice, really wonderful, wonderful experience with them. So I had to, I got to see creative people making sunglasses and protecting their rights and, you know, protecting their patents. And so that was really fun. That was a great experience. So now we're in the present or maybe a little bit in the past and you're, you guys are sculpting different elements from hotels. How does one get into some, doing something like that? How do you uh, approach a hotel and say, hey, you know what? I think your column needs some work here. Let me see what I can do. I agree. I agree. Because it's a business as well, right? Mm -hmm. You have to have a rainmaker. And that's what I call my dad. So my dad has, uh, has the ability to not only reimagine a space, he has the ability to speak and really connect with people quickly and i think he's able to convey because he's a really great sketch artist he can on the fly he can draw up something quickly so he's right. able to convey his vision and then what we like to do is we really like to take other people's visions and then show them what we think it can become sometimes people don't know how they can make it happen and we just come up, we, we're really out of the box thinkers and it's a beautiful thing to be able to be so creative on a daily basis. Right. I think I agree with that statement. I think that creativity is one of the most important things or elements that everybody should have. That's actually why I created this show because I wanted to talk to people who are creative and get the audience to understand that creativity is a big part of who they are as individuals. Do you remember, can you give us any anecdote in your life where you really began to understand the concept of what creativity was and how important it is to you? I just have always found that I'm a solution oriented person. So when you're creative and what I found is that creative people that I would be around always had a solution. So what I like about creative thinkers is that they can create solutions where somebody would might see a wall, a brick wall at that. And uh, for instance, the Bassett Tower, one, uh, the main entrance where you have the beautiful brass elevators that we restored right. as the entrance. Well, the air, I think there was a couple of huge ducts uh, things change from the 1900s to now with air conditioning and things like that. So you right. have to come up with some way to cover a big, ugly hole. And sometimes people can only see a big, ugly hole and they can't see past the big, ugly hole. And all we see is, oh, well, look at this gorgeous, decorative, um, ornate uh, filigree design. And let's take that and let's recreate it over here in clay and then let's make a mold and let's cast it and let's make it in. And this is this beautiful grate now. So this is gorgeous. There's these gorgeous grates that did not exist before. And all we did was take the element that was already in the building and then right. we created it to cover something. So it was a beautiful thing. It's a, it's fun. It's, it's a lot of creative. Uh, my dad's a creative thinker. It's Leonardo. Yeah, Leonardo. absolutely. One day I have to have him on the show as well. <laughs> right. Yeah. But one of the things that I think that you mentioned a moment ago is, you know, the opportunity where one person might see just a whole creative people see opportunities for something. Mm -hmm. 
was there a moment in your life that you can tell us a little bit about where you saw this opportunity and you brought something to fruition? I know that you haven't lived here your whole life. You've actually traveled a lot. So give us some kind of insight on what that was or maybe one specific moment. <laughs> you mean like manifestation? Um, yeah, I don't know. You tell us. Well, I would think that would be when I met you, it would be, uh, you know, working, I really wanted to do murals and that was, I was in San Diego and I just really wanted to do that. And that was my, that was going to be my creative outlet to go through a divorce. So uh, it was the creativity that got me through that. And that's another beautiful thing about creativity. When you can actually channel it, it can be such a wonderful outlet and it can be healing and it can really just take you somewhere where you never even thought you could go and to be able to do that work at jungle jacks with you and paint over what was that i think it was twenty thousand square feet i think it was, yeah, like it was 10, huge. square feet and we did that fast that was in little over i think it was less than two months we painted that yeah Top it was a pretty big project yeah and it was really cool to be able to create something we were the assistants to somebody who had created the actual uh, image but we were creating as we went it's like maybe we can change this a little bit maybe we can do this blah 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 which i think is also very interesting when you approach business that way uh when you guys are you and your father when you guys are approaching the actual clients and you're telling them hey you know what maybe we could do this is there an element of creativity while you were doing that for the actual uh um person that's asking you to do this like let's say i am an owner of a hotel how do you convince me that i need the work done ah uh, it's it's really that's a good question um he recently dad just recently went uh there's another building and we happen my dad is smart he he knew eventually they were going to work on that building. So he was smart when they were tossing, just taking the building apart. He went by and in the garbage, I think they had pieces of the second floor molding. The, and it's, non, it's non-existent now. So we have a mold of it. Right. <laughs> so when you walk in and you say, well, this used to exist on your second floor, you need it a little bit of a tax uh, benefit, right? So there's things to do that you wow. can, uh, in order to encourage them to go with you, uh, that would be one way that he would do it. But uh, it's, it's a creative way, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> That's the one thing that I think is interesting about your dad and yourself is that you guys are constantly thinking outside the box. And one of those outside the box ways of thinking is you were into kind of a little bit more spiritual kind of a metaphysical things. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Tell us kind of how you got into that and what it was. <laughs> sure. Because I think, I think it's something that connects definitely, but it's something different. Well, only a creative person would go traveling around the United States selling it. That's for darn sure. Because <laughs> I didn't believe it when I met him. So I can see why most people uh, would be skeptical with anything um, different, um, you know, most of the time. But I'm creative. I don't really, I like to see how things work. And it's, uh, it was basically frequency technology for pain relief. And that is, if if you wanted to couch it as far as terms of what, how they made it, it's quantum physics. I am not wow. a science person, it's no, not my thing, but I was really good at showing, I was really good at applying um, the samples to show people that uh, what would occur. And just amazing for three years, traveled around this country and really saw so many people in so much pain and I was able to take it away in like seconds and yeah it's it's a to be able to get people out of wheelchairs when they don't think they can even stay out of wheelchairs yeah uh, yeah it's, that is it's, huge it's huge it's huge my aunt's diabetic readings went down um her doctor couldn't believe it she's told her doctor what she was doing uh, another gentleman he was supposed to have his leg amputated, the rest of his leg amputated. And Jeez. so, I know, so we, we I, 
you just got to go for it sometimes and try. And it was something that was shown to me personally. And I was in a lot of pain at the time. I had an injury. Uh, just I had just a, a little twist and some swelling. And right immediately, once he put the samples on uh, my knee, all the swelling went away. And that doesn't happen in real life. I don't care what you get. So it was pretty amazing. Right, right. That is really amazing. I think it's interesting that you've done so many things in your life because you, you're here, you're there, but you're always creating things. So when we talk about creativity, while you guys are creating all these things, uh, these elements within Bassett Tower and what was the Camino Real, um, are there these upcoming thing, um, elements, uh, uh, works that you guys are working on right now that we could talk about? Oh, we'd like to, um, actually, there's something in the works with a, uh, hopefully with a statue, and if it may be uh, kinetic, so uh, water, wind, uh, a lot of movement, so hopefully there's nice. something with that, that would be nice, my, I know my dad really wants to do um, some large uh, sculpture work, he, um, he already has done them, but he really wants to do kinetic. That's his that's his drive for some reason. I think he wants to incorporate, you know, solar and wind, and it's just that Native American thing that runs through his blood or something. I don't know. That's gonna be really cool. Is that gonna be local? Hopefully. Yes, yes, yes. And of course, uh, bidding on more projects uh, for uh, historic restoration within the downtown area, El Paso really has quite a few gems and we really need to, you know, take care of them. And there's going to be some interesting things going down there. Who knows? I really don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just back. So I really didn't want to get into the politics. And actually I didn't even have time because I was working two to three shifts. So it was really amazing. All the guys at the job site asked me if I slept at the hotel and I don't. <laughs> Well, I know that it's time consuming, but you did mention one thing that you mentioned statues. And I know that you did a lot of restor restoration work at the missions. Yeah. How in the world did that come about? What exactly did you guys do? Um, is that something that you're continuing to do? Well, we're always available if they ever need help. In fact, I was wanting to go and see if that church that was vandalized, if they wanted us to work on that, because I think they said that it was completely destroyed and that's yeah. not, in my, my, it's not my in my vocabulary so <laughs> <laughs> so what what kind of work do you do when you guys restore statues yes we did historical restoration uh quite a, the stat, a lot of the statues at the socorro uh missions they um they were they were missing fingers uh limbs had been broken off people they're just praying to it and sometimes they lean or something and there goes a Jesus arm or something. So wow. we put it back together and um, it's interesting. Some of the, the most beautiful, beautiful, oldest statues ever. And you just get the opportunity to, um, to sand them and to work on them. And then you get to see as you're standing like, Oh, this is probably done in the 1970s. This was somebody else's, you know, right. this little area where they worked on. So it's it's such a cool thing. I just really love it. There's nothing nothing better than sitting there working on these projects at you know all hours. <laughs> and those sculptures are they always made out of plaster, or are some of them made out of wood? Different materials. How do you guys approach that? A lot of times it's wood. Um, when they're really really old, it's wood with plaster on top. So it's. Um, it's dependent on what it is. You have to be really, you know, really careful. You don't want to lose any of the original detail. Uh, you want to make sure it's completely the integrity of the piece is intact. So you don't want to go shifting colors. You've got to have a perfect match. You want to make sure. So sometimes I find little things like um, one of the statues, the most of the nubes, most of the clouds were... Right were sanded away it was just all this beautiful detail it was just you mean somebody prior in our restoration did that yes yes so wow was, so how did you how did you approach that you redid everything 
rebuilt it yeah rebuilt it of course absolutely that was the case with bassett as well the ceiling um when i was uh before gilding because i was up there you know you have to go up there and you have to just work on every piece it's the ceiling you don't want you can't have anything falling on anybody's head so right. had to go make sure everything's intact what's not intact remove um replace cast uh which we, we did there were some panels that we had to cast again uh, or create again and um and then uh sometimes i found that people will just use i don't know maybe it's a somebody just going in and doing a little small thing but they tend to use like joint compound or plaster and they just take away all the details so when i find right. something like that i feel like it's it's on me to bring back the beauty that was there and, and all that gorgeous work that somebody else did well i think it's wonderful that you create all of these different things with your dad i think it's also beautiful that you're actually working with your dad because that's something that i think a lot of people would love to do and you're actually getting the opportunity to do it which i think is incredible yeah. uh you know my father uh passed away several months ago so it's a uh, uh, thing that I will no longer get to do, but I'm very, very happy that you have the opportunity to do that. So you've done a bunch of the hotels here in El Paso, and you're trying to get all of these uh, new projects going. So I wanted to say that I'm very, very happy that you took the opportunity and the time to talk to us today, because I think that it is something that the audience needs to learn a little bit about, just the creative aspect of you as an individual and your father creating these sculptures and sometimes recreating these sculptures, which is cool. Uh, thank you for uh, coming and being our guest. Did you have fun? I did. Thank you. Thank you. I had a, I had a blast. And I'm sorry to hear about your dad. That's just... Yes, you know, but you, it's the way that things have to be sometimes. Yeah. But I wanted to thank you and... Uh, I wanted to thank the audience for coming in and watching the show, Rebecca Quintana. Is there a way for the audience to get a hold of you guys if they want uh, you to do some work for them? Can you give oh, us absolutely. that information? Absolutely. Uh, QuintanaArt.com is the website, Quintana, okay. Q-U-I-N-T-A-N-A, -A, QuintanaArt.com. And uh, you can always uh, ask about us at the Paso del Norte. They definitely have our information there as well. Uh, but uh, I will be um, probably starting something up here in 2021 for okay. myself, and it'll be uh, it'll be my own historic restoration. I kind of want to focus on Sunset Heights and all the historical districts in El Paso. Beautiful. Well, thank you very much. And I want to thank the audience for joining us once again. And I hope that you guys can join us in the future for all the other incredible people that we will have. Rebecca, thank you very much. Thank you.